Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through daily crypto news and analysis. And as you guys can tell on my screen, I can't really use CoinMarketCap. Just address this in the Casper video. Um, but overall, we could kind of report on things. I'm going to be talking to you guys about Quant Network or QNT as you guys do know. Uh, currently trading at about $171. Uh, this one actually hasn't glitched too much yet. Uh, I mean, a lot of things are like just weird on Coin uh, Market Cap as well as even on Coinbase. Like Coinbase is really kind of glitched out currently, and uh, yeah, I mean, Quant's kind of glitched if you do click on it. But uh, yeah, I mean, overall, uh, currently right now things are looking pretty, you know, rough for QNT and for most altcoins. But you know, this one. I'm not too bullish on QNT until we do break over this point at around $205. I will say this though, um, it isn't a good sort of accumulation level point, especially if we do have that extended bull run that a lot of people have been talking about, myself included. Uh, now, if we are looking at Bitcoin, just to get, give you guys a little bit of an insight on that, uh, things are looking pretty okay. I mean, it's not too bad. Uh, volume is looking pretty good. If we do look at the volume, we could pretty much kind of look at that real quick. Uh, so volume is, you know, flowing in. If we go to the, you know, four hour and stuff like that, you can pretty much see that volume kind of coming in at pretty good amounts as well. Uh, so I'm watching Bitcoin pretty closely here. I do want to see us back to a nice, you know, level uh, somewhere up above in, in these demand zones at around almost four, uh, 54K to about 56K. I just uh, told you guys about this in the Casper video as well. So until that is uh, pretty much, you know, retrieved or I should say, you know, achieved realistically, speaking um, I'm not going to be too bullish on this market but I will say this you know QNT needs a lot more volume than what we are seeing because volume right now really does suck on a lot of altcoins and QNT is definitely one of them as well I have seen a lot of people kind of celebrating this pump here but there was really no reason to celebrate this pump as you guys do see the volume was not looking good for that pump anyway so overall just to sum it up I do want more volume on QNT, and I do want Bitcoin at those significant levels. But before we fully jump on into this video, I just want to ask you guys to please leave a like on this video. It does help the channel grow immensely. You guys have no idea. It does really help the video, you know, pretty much get pushed to more individuals, and I do greatly appreciate it. As well as if you guys do want to go check out my website, NCashOfficial.com, the Ultimate Cru uh, Crusader Trading Bundle Pack is on sale 35% off currently right now. Uh, there's a ton of content within this. Everything on the website is included, as well as all future content for free. And I just released a new video the ultimate swing trading strategy 1k to 1 million dollars uh, this is included as well so anything that does get released is just thrown into this as well and currently it is on sale 35% off for $65 for anybody who is you know interested now I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about the overall social metrics for quant so there's actually not a lot of social engagement currently probably because the price is not really doing much uh, but I suspect that this will change very soon as soon as you know the price does bounce back on the one week again you know social volume is increasing a little bit on the one week social engagements up slightly and of course social contributors are up uh, you know more and more but Overall, you know, Q&T just does not look good in terms of social metrics until it does start to really kind of move in price. So I'm actually paying attention to this as well as the price uh, greatly right now, uh, because until we do see a lot more social volume within the price range as well, um, you know, things are not going to look too good. So we need a lot more volume one in terms of just, pr you know, actual people buying it um, as well as, you know, a lot more you know, pretty much price fluctuations as well for a lot more social volume to really kind of take into accountability. So just keep give you guys those quick insights. Social metrics do not look good. Volume just just does not look good either. So they both need to change. Now I do also want to show you guys this QNT enables the great reset. So I know that a lot of people talk about the great reset a lot. I personally do like to talk about it as well because it looks like, you know, digitization is going to take this entire world by storm, uh, more so DLTs and stuff like that. They are talking about DLTs. We even see here today, DLTs can interoperate seamlessly and easily allowing their full potential to be realized across a multitude of use cases. You know, of course, they are seen here over the years. There have been many attempts to solve the problem of interoperability. World Economic Forum identified three main categories, cross-authentication, DLT, relayers, 
oracles and API gateways. So a lot of this uh, pretty much essentially <laughs> brings us all the way back to Q and Team. We do see here, and it was for this reason that Quant uh, chose the API gateway model for Overledger, our own solution to the challenge of interoperability. Overledger is easily integrated with multiple DLTs, including Hyperledger Fabric, Hyperledger Basu, and Quant is constantly expanding the list of supported DLTs as well. And of course, we do see here, here's that pretty much massive, pretty much overall graph on how this will all work. It's going to pretty much bleed into everyday life uh, for everything. We were talking, you know, credit insurance companies, you know, credit insurance, you know, companies in general, pretty much bleeding to the in institutional investors into exporting credit agencies. You know, all of this is going to be huge, especially for banks, uh, buyers and suppliers, trade finance networks, other participants, participants connected with multiple networks as well. This is going to be huge. Now, we also do see this. Uh, this is pretty much the overledger graph for pretty much everything connecting to every single blockchain. And we do see a lot of big names listed here. For example, Ripple, Corda, you know, Hyperledger as well, Ethereum, JP Morgan Quorum, Stellar, EOS, IOTA, you know, Ethereum again, Constellation, Big Data, Bitcoin. Pretty much everything is going to be connected throughout this entire process. And this is all through existing networks as well uh, with, you know, platforms, enterprise systems and applications. So this is going to be pretty huge as an API gateway. And you can also read more about this. Here's their goals. Uh, again, I'm not going to go over this all together, but of course you can pretty much see and read for yourself if you want. You could even pause the video and read this. Uh, this is going to be pretty good, especially for distributed ledger technologies to really kind of be adopted at scale. And of course we do see here combining interoperability categories. Like I said, it's going to connect to pretty much everything. Uh, and blockchain, you know, even we do see here from uh, the weforum.org or the World Economic Forum, uh, could blockchain be the key that unlocks the S uh, DGs? Now, with all of this in mind, there is going to be a ton of money that flows over these massive networks, these massive, you know, pretty much projects as well. And uh, in my mind, I don't see these assets not being worth, you know, a ton of money in terms of market cap value. I mean, we're seeing, you know, assets that pretty much have no real value being worth billions of dollars currently. And like I said, with something like QNT being the network of networks, I just don't see it being, you know, worth at the current price of like 170 a token. I, I see it being worth well more than that. And I've talked to you guys about this on a day to day basis. Um, but it is really the truth, right? And we do see here, read it however you need to and make of it whatever you want. The technology is a revolution. The progress is natural evolution. And it truly is. There's a ton of stuff that interoperability really kind of does solve, even going all the way back to like healthcare systems and stuff like that that I've talked about. Now, we also talk about SIA. So all players in the European financial system will need to connect to the ESMIG to access Target 2, T2S, uh, TIPS, ECMS, uh, which process 2.8 trillion, uh, I believe that's euros every day. Uh, SIA and SWIFT are the only two network providers. Quant are integrated into SIA's network, enabling all those to access interoperability QNT. Now, We've talked about uh, SIA a lot in terms of what they are really kind of doing and focused on. It's pretty much just the banking scene, banking in general. Now we do see here SIA's recent merger with Nexi has made them the Europe's largest payment provider connecting over 580 central banks, tier one banks, uh, trading venues, payment providers from around the world. And this goes back to January, just so you guys know. Uh, and a lot of updates have come, you know, essentially from this as well. So, you know, in my mind, the future of this this space is going to look extremely different. And and from SIA's standpoint, SIA is doing incredibly well. Uh, I have a ton of stuff to really kind of go in depth on SIA because SIA is such a massive giant. Um, but we also see her obviously accumulating Q&T on this generational wealth dip. Not only the patriarch of our new financial systems, but connector of the world's networks. Endless use cases, endless connections, endless banks, and Gilbert's CEO resume, uh, 160K and on. So obviously, you know, some jokes here, but for, for you know, an overall realistic standpoint on what Q&T's real utility looks like, you can pretty much see it here, right? Enterprise licenses, developer licenses, platform fees, identity and account, investment, store, value, gateways, and staking, application uses, transaction processing. And, you know, these are just some of those other use cases beyond the idea as being, uh, of being like a gateway bridge for all DLTs and CBDCs. Like, don't get me wrong. That is also a major use case. You know, if we're talking about CBDCs in general, you know, you could pretty much look back on, you know, this 2.8 trillion euros. Uh, I know that SWIFT does like about like 5 trillion a day. Like 
these are some massive prices. Like, these are some massive amounts of money flows. I mean, I know that this is a joke at like, you know, Quant being worth, you know, $1.8 billion. Um, but, you know, when we're talking about like a $60,000 Q&T or like a $100,000 Q&T, that sounds like something that could potentially be the future of what Quant could actually become. Okay, because when we're talking about everything that is going to grow in this entire system of systems, when we're talking about the future of future networks, and we're talking about the future of the payment scene, the banking scene, everything will be connected. And you cannot get th those connections without Q&T. Also, uh, Tasha, this uh, real Tasha or Natasha Shea, sorry, on uh, Twitter, pretty much made this massive breakdown list of pretty much crypto in general. Right there, she's talking about 2021 uh, being good for crypto and pretty much to look out for in terms of 2022 and all that kind of stuff. Now, the main thing that really kind of stood out to me was this. We just hear this sector is destined to grow, but there's no mature slash dominant players yet, and it's uncertain where the value added will occur. Similar to the DeFi situation, which I'll explain in a second, watch for promising projects such as Quant and Layer Zero. And I do just want to say right now, uh, if you aren't paying attention to what Quant is actually building, if I know that you know there's a ton of Layer 1s here, there's a ton of Layer 2s, there's a ton of DeFi, NFT, Metaverse, gaming, and stuff like that tokens. But realistically speaking, uh, there's only really one Quant or QNT asset in this space. It's really solved the major pain point for a lot of these major banks to really kind of move into DLT technologies. They want plug and play. They want, you know, easy usability of these technologies. And they really can't get that easy usability because of the major problem. And what is that major problem, you might ask? It's interoperability, being able to gossip with other major protocols, other DLTs. That is the future of Web 3.0 plug ability plug and play and just kind of let things you know connect with one another and message one another easily you know a lot of people you know i try to sum it up as easy as possible without utilizing you know terminology that a lot of people really wouldn't understand but realistically speaking the best way that i could sum it up is q t is truly becoming and i know it's been it's called this forever but it's truly becoming the network of networks that will pretty much bridge trillions of dollars to one you know, specific network or DLN, because that is essentially what they are building a, dis a decentralized or distributed ledger network. Sorry. And this is all going to be happening through decentralization as well. So, you know, if you're not paying attention to QNT just because it is at like $176, maybe you bought up here, uh, maybe you want to rebuy down here, or maybe you're just like, well, this thing's just going to continue to go down. I'll buy at like $100 or less than $100. I'll buy at 80, 70, 60, whatever the price may be. You know, that's totally fine to have that mentality. Um, but just understand that this is one of those assets that has a very limited supply, even comparing it to Bitcoin. And the use cases behind it are so much bigger than Bitcoin could ever become. I know that Bitcoin was the first on the block to really kind of pave the roads for all of these other major assets, but it's truly going to be one of those things that gets surpassed by something like QNT, for example. If I had to guess an asset that could potentially become the number one asset in the space, I've always said that HBAR does have the potential to become that from its overall usability, but also so does QNT. And I would say that QNT probably has a higher percentage to get there uh, just because of what it is truly building and becoming the network of all of these DLTs that we've been talking about on a day to day basis. If, you know, XRP is moving a hundred trillion dollars worth of value over the the network, right? Just think about, you know, all, all these other DLTs that would have to connect with that amount of money as well to kind of flow over it. You know, it needs something like QNT to interoperate with those other networks. So overall, to really kind of sum it up, QNT is going to be a massive giant. I know I kind of just rambled on a little bit about what QNT really truly is going to become. And in my mind, this is a clear winner. So with all that in mind, I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to the notification on. If you guys don't want free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter. And join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night. Where you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.